Wall Street, New York, in the years that followed the Civil War, was fast becoming the brain center of the financial world, and in 89 was the scene of a near crisis in American history. The war has emptied the national treasury of its gold reserve, gentlemen. Mining operations in the West are in the doldrums. This makes the time right for the most daring coup in financial history. Others have aspired to corner cotton, wheat, and steel. But we, gentlemen, are going to corner gold. Governor of California. Speed up gold production in your state. Signed U.S. Grant. Here's another to the Governor of Colorado. Bend every effort to double production of Colorado gold. The President realized that the only way to meet the situation was to rush more gold to the mints. So he sent those telegrams. But as soon as the western states speeded up mining operations, a new danger more vicious than its conspirators of Wall Street began to threaten. Here, look at this. Gold stage robbed. Yellow Jacket mine looted. Bandits take $30,000 in gold. This kind of banditry is rampant in our own mother lode. Some of the richest mines in the state are located here. Mud Flat, Wolf's Hollow, Sulphur Springs. The only smelter in the vicinity is here is Gold Butte. You mean they have to haul all the ore up there to be refined? And it's from there that the bullion has to be shipped to the mint. On those old stages that are being robbed? That's right. So we decided a few range busters can mop up Cattle rustlers in the San Joaquin, there's no reason why. Now, just wait a minute. What we did to those rustlers is because we're partial to cows and to the folks who make a living raising them. But when it comes to riding herd on bullion for a lot of rich gold miners, that's out. You'll be riding herd for Uncle Sam. The only way to lick the present panic is to see that every available ounce of gold reaches the mint. Well, since you put it that way, whom do we report to? Martin Ford at Gold Butte. Now who's he, the feller that owns the smelter? No, a man by the name of Bentley runs the smelter. Ford was sent there to speed up mining activities. Oh, a mining engineer. And he's done a good job getting the ore as far as the smelter, but not so good getting the smelted bullion to the mint. How soon can you boys get up there and give him a hand? Well, let's see. Dusty and I have to stay over a couple of days and give some testimony against the cow thief up Stockton Way. But there's nothing from stopping alibi from moseying up there right away. Whoa there, Dusty. No, I mean kind of unnoticed, so you can do some nosying around, kind of casual and unannounced. Well, I get it. Seems like that's all I do. If I ain't moseying, I'm nosing. Now I got to do both. <laughs> <laughs> Step right up, gentlemen. Don't be backward. Hey, you two hombres, come over here. We have here an array of cosmopolitan merchandise that is beneficial to you as well as ornamental. Right up here. These marvelous modish articles which I'm about to display to you will open new vistas, as well as your pocketbook. <laughs> Quit interrupting. We'll open new vistas which will bring into your mundane life. Look, Terhoon, why don't you trade in those two bit words for case? That's the only way you're gonna get any money out of this bunch of hammerheads. <laughs> <laughs> Gents and ladies. Ladies? Sure. Do west of here. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Elmer, quit flirting. Oh, you want to do it yourself, huh? <laughs> she is pretty, ain't she? She'd doodly get a better one. Wonder if she'd go for me. She's too pretty for you, Elmer. I resent that. Well, maybe you're right. Wonder if we could sell her some Suspenders, maybe. <laughs> well, maybe she's got a husband. Tell me, Elvi. Do you think she'd go for me? Do you think we're suited? <laughs> Oh, I guess it's just empty dream. Ah, oh, me. <laughs> All I have here is the most remarkable display of merchandise in this part of the West. I have here these suspenders, triple stretch, double strength, strong enough to suspend a bridge across the Mississippi. You've heard of the man that lost his pants in a poker game? Buy my suspenders and lose your pants. <laughs> Over here, friends, we have ties that's as kind to your neck as a damsel's arm. And not only that, each 
get out of it. Absolutely free, I'm going to give you one of these magnetic, dynamic combs that is permeated with that lodestone. You know the one, the uh, lodestone is that magic stone that was imported from Buena Vista that used to help the ancient mariners scour the seven seas. Now this will not only comb hair, my friends, but it will grow hair. It'll grow hair on a doorknob. It looks like an ordinary comb, but it permeated with that lodestone, that famous lodestone from Buena Vista. I thank you. And who buys another comb? As I said before, friends, not only combs hair, but grows hair. One of my customers the other day I had a Mexican hairless dog. She accidentally combed it just a little. Next morning, it looked like a grizzly bear. I thank you. And who buys another comb? Better stretch your legs, Toby, while I make my report. All right, Hank. Alibi. Learned anything yet? Nothing much, except... Except what? Well, there's a certain party around here in Bear Watch. Yeah? Who? Over there. Careful. Try and look natural like we don't want to rouse any suspicions. Go Butte. Well, may I? Whoops. <laughs> Pardon me. May I carry your bag to the stagecoach? Why, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Give me a little information. Uh, it depends on what you want to know and how much you want to know and is it going to cost me anything. Oh, no, it's nothing as serious as all that. I was just kind of curious as to who that girl is. Curious? Well, partner, you're just human, that's all. <laughs> kind of cute, ain't she? Yep, she sure is. That's Irene Bentley. She's Jim Bentley's daughter. Oh. He runs a smelter at Gold Butte. Bentley, eh? Well, thanks a lot. Hey, stranger, I'll give you five dollars to take my horse into Gold Butte. Sure, if you take care of my sample case. It's a deal. I'll see you in Gold Butte, stranger. Hey, you are, driver. Oh, pardon me. be any better, and it better not be any further. I'm headed there, too. My name's Crash Corrigan. How do you do? Howdy. I'm going to Gold Butte, too. That's nice. You live there, ma'am? Yes, indeed. Know anything about this here Jim Bentley? Who am I? Why? I hear he's allowing someone to get away with a lot of gold. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it allowing. Oh. I get what you mean. Helping them's more like it, huh? Now, we can't be too sure of that, Crash. After all, we don't know the man. I'll bet he's an all right maverick, don't you? Not if his name's Bentley. It couldn't be. 
company comes from a bad lot. Why, I once knew of a horse thief by the name of Bentley, and he cheated at cards, too. There's nothing like a little music, is there? When the wheels are turning, then I keep yearning to sing my song. As I was saying, as we ride along, following the trail for the prairie's part of the cowboy's heart and its home, sweet home, where he loves to trail. There are days when it's cloudy and night's not a star, but we cowboys are happy no matter where we are. When the wheels are turning, then I keep yearning to sing my song as we ride along, following the trail. But we cowboys are happy No matter where we are When the wheels are turning Then I keep yearning To sing my song As we ride along Following the train Somebody's in trouble. for the clouds.
easy right in there, fella. Here you are, partner. Who tipped you off there was gold in that buckboard? Nobody. Then how did you know there was any? I didn't. All I was after was potatoes. Ah, potatoes. Sure, I like them. I never get enough of them. Ice brown, baked, boiled, mashed, mashed. scallop, scallop, and french fries. Oh, never mind that. Now, who told you? Was it this here Bentley? It looks like we're going to be pretty crowded. Maybe you'd be more comfortable up there with the driver. Miss Bentley. Well, who was it, Bent? Bentley? <laughs> Just like that. Always kidding. <laughs> Just as though your name could be Ben. It isn't, is it? It most certainly is. Oh, is it? Small world, isn't it? Yes, it is. Wouldn't it be funny if you were this Mr. Bentley that runs the smelter? But of course I know it. Couldn't it? He's my... Uh, what gave you that idea? Oh, it wasn't given me. I just picked it up. Oh, by the way, Dad. Did we ever have a relative who was a horse thief and cheated at cards? Ooh, let me think now. Yes, seems to me there was more than one Bentley that had a hankering for other people's legs. But they never cheated at cards. No, sir. That would have been dishonest. Why, did you think that I said Bentley? That's what it sounded like. Oh, shucks, no. I was talking about an hombre named Benny. Chuck Benny, yeah, that's who it was. Well, now, how do you like that? All the while, she's been thinking that I said Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine, folks. Doc's got Ed all patched up, and I've got Joe all locked up, safe and sound. Oh, uh, has he talked to you? Yeah, but it won't bear repeating. Well, thanks to you boys, we've at least got the bullion. That's better than we usually make out. Still, I'd rather it was in the mint. Well, see you all later. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Ford. We're supposed to take orders from you. I don't see why. You do pretty well without them. But uh, come over to my office across the street as soon as you can. Say, uh, what happened to the fellow that helped you save the gold? That suspender salesman? Oh, he's probably out trying to peddle shoehorns with local blacksmiths. <laughs> Get right this way. It's all free. It costs absolutely nothing to look. <laughs> the finest assortment of gee gaws, men's wearing apparel, and miscellaneous merchandise ever assembled under one roof. It's all yours for a song. Of course, don't all sing at once. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, the price is cheap. And the material is cheap. <laughs> he scared away all her customers. Look at that hombre minus the top piece, Elmer. I wonder if he's the Robert we ran afoul of today. left, the hombre without the hat. It's Tom Harris that owns the Coyote Mine, the edge of town. Oh, one of them rich gold miners, eh? Pretty, pretty low-grade stuff. I don't see why Tom and his crew keep working it. Say, you're kind of nosy for a stranger, ain't you? The only time I'm nosy is when I smell a sale. And I think I got just the thing for Mr. Harris. Come on, Elmer. Pretty can of sardines you got us into. Oh, listen, boss, I can explain everything. Never mind. And don't make yourself comfortable. I'm expecting Corrigan and King, the two heroes of the day. The ones that grabbed Joe. That's what I want to talk to you about. I just been over to the jail to see Joe. How is he taking it? Oh, he's pretty scared. Is he liable to talk out of turn? He might if we don't do something about getting him out of jail, Pardo. All right. You tell him to keep his mouth shut. I'll figure a way to get him out. Well, how? 
Using my influence. Tell him. Go out that way. Come in. Well, well. Didn't expect to see you so soon. Sit down. Much obliged. Cigar? Uh, never use them. No, thanks. Now then, what can I do for you? How about some suggestions? What's our next move? That's entirely up to you. You've already landed one bandit in jail, which is a lot more than all the rest of us have been able to do. Yes, but he's not going to do us much good unless we can scare him into telling us who the man higher up is. Maybe there isn't any. Maybe he's as high as they go. Nope. Whoever told him there was gold in that wagon load of spuss, that's the man we're after. That's what I can't understand. Who gave out the information? How about Bentley? Well, of course, he knew, but... Uh, who else knew? Well, supposedly only Ed, who drove the buckboard. That's not getting us very far, is it? If they weren't tipped off, how'd they find out? I still say that sometimes even the walls have ears. No, no, Crash, not out here. They don't build them that way. Well, anyhow, I'm not taking a chance on another shipment until you boys round up all the robbers. Our job is to see that every available ounce of gold gets to that mint as quickly as possible. I know. That's my job, too. But just the same, I'm going to hold up a few days and see what happens. Just about how much gold do you figure you have on hand, Mr. Ford? I'd say about a quarter of a million in a smelter vault. Wow. That's a lot of bullion. It ain't cactus. Gosh, I don't know what you're brushing my teeth for. We ain't eat for a week. When do we eat, Terhune? Look at me. I'm just a splinter of my former self. It's conditions, Elmer. Supply and demand, that's what it is. Too much supply, not enough demand. Conditions ain't got anything to do with it, Alibi, and you know it. Trouble is, you ain't in condition. No sales appeal. No front. Fine peddler you turned out to be. Young man. I'll thank you not to call me a peddler. How many times must I tell you that I'm a purveyor, a provider of paltry yet necessary ornaments for my lady and my lord? Well, get him. I didn't know he had it in him. Once is enough, partner. I know when I'm licked. Besides, I have a worry on my mind. Must be a heck of a small worry, ain't it? What's eating you? Guys, there goes that word, eating again. Well, I've been a-thinking about that bareheaded gent. Why couldn't he be one of those robbers? The one that lost his hat? I don't see how being very headed would prove anything. Maybe he's allergic to hats. Maybe he's losing his hair. Well, I don't see him getting many gray hairs over that worthless mine. There must be something about it that's still useful to him. Hi, pal. Boy, have we got news. Here's those two prairie bloodhounds probably got the whole shooting work solved. We rigged up with Ford to smoke the robbers out in the open again. You want to know how? Yeah, me too. With a, ship ah. with a ship and a bullion on the gold stage. Only this time it won't be gold. It'll be gold, all right, that we take out of the vault. But it won't be gold that we put on the... No, thanks. I'll look over some mining property. You going to give up dry goods for gold mining? Sure. Why not? It's only a hop, skip, and a jump from peddling to prospecting. Or notions to nuggets. If you don't believe me, look it up in the dictionary.
like there isn't going to be any holdup. This is about the end of the Badlands. Crash, I've been a thinking. You know, Ford could be guilty as easily as Bentley. Maybe. Why do you suppose he'd want to keep all that bullion in the vault? Did you ever think how you'd go about it if you wanted to grab yourself a great big hunk of gold? Unlawful, like I mean? Well, I'd, uh... Well... <laughs> oh, I'd go to the vault and... Vault? You don't suppose somebody's aiming to hold up the vault itself? Why not? I know if it was me, I'd rather have a quarter of a million all at once than in little bits. Dusty, what if today's the day and he got us out of town on a wild goose chase? We jumped to conclusions too soon. Telephone's horses is not reaching. stage so we keep our eyes off Ford and on Bentley. Well, suppose we keep Ford thinking we're doing just that. All the same, it wasn't smart to leave the bullion box right on the road. Well, you never learn to play your hand right. Well, they just figured they scared us away, boss. There ain't nothing to worry about. There's plenty to worry about. Jake says somebody was snooping in a coyote mine this afternoon. Who? That necktie peddler. What's more, Jake found his tracks in the new tunnel. There's nothing to worry about, eh? You suppose he found out what we were digging for? I don't see how he can. How much longer are you going to be digging? Well, we must be getting pretty close to the smelter. Uh, if my figuring is right, we ought to be right under the vault another day or two. Hey, there's Corrigan and King now. They're tying their horse across the street. Corrigan seems to be heading for my office. I guess I'd better go see what he has to say. Meanwhile, you might try to stay out of trouble for once. Well, it looks like we got things narrowed down to just one man. Bentley? What do you think? Frankly, I don't know what to think. Ordinarily, Bentley is the last man in the world I'd suspect. Well, you can't always spot a crook by what he looks like. I reckon I'll go over to Bentley's house tonight and have a little powwow. Well, isn't it a little too early to start accusing him? Oh, I don't aim to do that. I was just going to sort of beat around the bush and feel him out. Come in. Good evening, ma'am. I'm afraid I can't agree with you on that subject. Yes, ma'am. Tell me, what are you looking for? Stolen horses in the living room or cards up my sleeve? No, ma'am. To tell the truth, I was looking for your father and kind of hoping you'd sort of let me explain about the other afternoon. I'm afraid I can't, Mr. Corrigan. Perhaps my father will. He'll be back here soon. You can wait in here if you like. But don't expect me to keep you company. No, ma'am. Wouldn't think of it. And don't be at all surprised if my father has nothing whatsoever to do with you. No, ma'am. For heaven's sake, stop being so agreeable. No, ma'am. I mean, yes, ma'am. Or is it no, ma'am? Let's see now. No, ma'am, I won't stop being so agreeable. No. Yes, ma'am, I will stop being so agreeable. Oh, shucks, I don't know. Anyhow, I will. Or I won't. 
whichever it is. She's as sweet as maple syrup, and I'm rarin' in my stirrups. My heart is actin' mighty, mighty strange. Getting closer every hour to the fairest prairie flower. I'm a headin' for my sweetheart of the range. Oh, the night is long and dreary, and the one I love ain't near me, and the old trail is as lonesome as can be. But I'll soon be getting nearer to the one gal who is dearer, for I know that she is waiting there for me. She's as sweet as maple syrup, and I'm rarin' in my stirrups. My heart is actin' mighty, mighty strange. Getting closer every hour to the fairest prairie flower. I'm a headin' for my sweetheart of the range. Oh, the night will soon be mornin', and tomorrow will be dawnin'. And the hilltops I'll be looking down to see Someone waving in the valley Who is always true and pally She's a sweetheart who is waiting there for me joke on Dusty. <laughs> he thinks I'm Irene. <laughs> he just finished serenading me for three long choruses. <laughs> Did he? Really? Yeah, and then I threw him a rose. <laughs> <laughs> the more you think of it, the funnier it gets. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly does. <laughs> boy, oh boy, will he be surprised. <laughs> If you did want to see me... <laughs> want to see you? Oh, yeah. Did you know, Mr. Bentley, that the stage was just robbed again? No. Was the bullion lost? No. You see, we had it all planned. So we... Come in. Hello, Sheriff. What did you want? Sorry, Jim, but I got to ask you to come along with me. What? Joe's broke down and confessed everything. He has? Whom did he implicate? 
You ought to know, Jim. Why? What do you mean? He says he's been taking orders from you. <gasps> Joe slipped that to me. Told me to give it to you. Anything wrong? Nothing that I can't take care of. Anything I can do for you? No, Tom. No, thanks. That's all. See you later. this window. I got a gun for you. I'm sorry, fellas, but I still can't believe that Bentley's the one who gave out that information. Of course, I don't expect to make you think that way, Crash. After all, you suspected him from the very start. What are you talking about? I never suspected Bentley. But you said that he... All right, so I said. But I'm saying right now that Bentley's no more of a bandit than I am. But what about Joe and his confession? Do you think he was lying? Sure. He had nothing to lose. He might just as well accuse Bentley as anybody else. Yeah. Only how are we going to go about proving that? I wonder if Joe said anything about Tom Harris and his confession. Oh, how should we know? Who's Tom Harris? Tom Harris? Yeah. Just a bandit that lost his hat. Oh, so the bandit that lost his hat. How'd you find out his name? Well, I'll tell you. Elmer and me have been a couple of rolling stones the last few days. And what we didn't gather in Moss, we got an information. Oh, I suppose you saw him without his hat, huh? Yeah, how'd you guess? Well, it just came to me. But I wished it hadn't. Of course, there aren't any other men in the world that go around bareheaded, are there? But listen, you just got to believe me. Tom Harris is a man. He's even got a hideout in the old coyote. And what makes you think it's a hideout? Well, I was over there started scouting around. But what I can't understand is why they're digging a new tunnel. Maybe they're tired of the old ones. But all they're getting out of this tunnel is just plain dirt and sandstone. And everybody says there ain't no gold worth digging for in the old coyote. And which direction did you say they are digging this tunnel? Well, when you get tangled up in tunnels, you sort of lose track of directions, but as near as I can figure out, it's a little east to north. And what direction is the mine from town? West to south, why? I don't get it. Well, don't you see? It's east of north. Yeah. And west of south. Follow me? No, I must have gotten off a little ways back. Must have taken the high road. Ah, you get what I mean, don't you, Alibi? Don't ask me, brother. I'm just waiting for a stagecoach. <laughs> All right, wise guy. You just wait until tomorrow until I spring this on Joe. Boy, oh boy, will this take the wind out of his confession. Sorry, King, are you in there? Yeah. What's the matter? Howdy, Sheriff. Joe had just been murdered and shot dead in his cell. Who did it? I don't know, but it must have been on account of Jim Bentley. Somebody didn't want Joe to testify legal. Hey, Tom, about a foot to the left. That's good, stick it. Our measurements are right, we're under the smelter now. A few more feet will put a smack under the floor of the vault. All right, Jake. All right, boy. We're almost ready to put our hands on a quarter of a million in bullion. I know we are, and maybe easier than you can imagine. I don't think we'll need your tunnel. We'll need it. No. Here's the combination to the vault. Where'd you get it? Bentley gave it to me. Bentley? Yep. 
After what happened to Joe, there was no evidence left to hold him. But he insisted on resigning until his name was cleared. So, I'm taking over until the big cheese gets here from San Francisco. Ward? Yep. But he don't get here till tomorrow. So all we've got to do is open the door and clean out the vault tonight. Well, won't they suspect you? Don't everybody know you've got the combination? Yeah. But I'm going to have an ironclad alibi. I'm going to be in conference with the sheriff and those two smart Alex Ward sent up here while you and Jake are opening the vault. Oh, I get it. They'll think Bentley did it. Or slip the combination to somebody else. When are you going to hold this conference? About half past nine tonight. Hey, Charlie. In spite of Joe's confession, Sheriff, it's still hard for me to believe that Bentley was mixed up in this. I don't see why it's so hard to believe. Everything pointed to him from the first. I know appearances are against him. But appearances have been responsible for many miscarriages of justice. Now, the only miscarriage of justice was turning Bentley loose. After he had someone killed, the only witness we had against him. All right, Corrigan. All right. Just sit down and go ahead with this problem. This must be the window Ford was going to leave unlocked. You light this candle while I figure out the combination. Slipped up somewhere. That means starting all over again. Start reaching. Both of you. Sounds like it might be coming from the smelter. Birds a chance to come peaceful life. You ain't doing us any favors. I got him. Come on, let's get out of here. Hold it. Leave everything to me. Light that lamp. What's going on in here? Are right, we caught that next high peddler trying to get into the vault? What are you doing here? Well, Jake it, and I... It was my idea. Because of so much bullion in the vault, I had Tom and Jake stay on guard here. Is he wounded bad? He's deader than Adam. Drilled clean through the heart. Let me have the key, Charlie. We want to view the deceased.
gentlemen, please. Let's have a little respect for old alibi. Yes, even though he was just a common, ordinary peddler. You know, he was a nice old coot. Too bad he turned to crime. And that just goes to prove that crime never pays. Oh, you're so right, Crash. Life's too short, isn't it? Oh, you aren't just saying that, partner. And there's the proof of the pudding. Make mine custard. I wonder if he's up there selling suspenders to the angels. Oh, he never got to heaven. He's more than likely having a fire sale on asbestos coats. Don't get so sassy there, partner. You may be wanting one of them asbestos coats one of these days, and I may not be so anxious to sell. You know, I could have swore I heard him a-talking just then, just like he always did, through his nose. Or through that dummy of his. Those two were inseparable. I never could tell them apart. Neither could I. No. You two hombres think I'm going to take this line down. You got another think of coming. Why, Alibi? <laughs> Why, I thought you were dead. Hi there, Alibi. <laughs> say, you're looking pretty nice since you've been dead. <laughs> well, hello, Mr. Warden, Sheriff. Say, we're going to serve some tea here in a few minutes. How'd you like yours, a crumpet or hardtack? Suppose we save it for the inquest this afternoon when all the boys are there. The inquest? The inquest for whom? Anybody I know? <laughs> Great kidder, isn't he? <laughs> Alibi, that was a stroke of genius, you playing dead. <laughs> it was a lifesaver. How do you like that? I had to play dead to stay alive. My gun was empty. <laughs> well, now, you just play your part at the inquest this afternoon, and we'll catch that gang red-handed. Just you stay dead a little while longer. Stay dead? Yeah. You got to be dead at an inquest. Oh, no. That's carrying a bad thing just a little too far. Oh. So that's it, Alibi. You're going to turn us down. No, now, Crash, don't you take it too hard. It's best we found it out now. We'll manage somehow. We'll finish this job alone, even if it's our last. All right, I'll do it, even if it kills me. Kills me? What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> we knew you wouldn't let us down, Alibi. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, for nothing. Say, who's guarding the vault? A man can't die for a few days without you two bungling things up. Don't worry about that, Alibi. I've changed the combination. Now, you just be a good boy and play your part. Oh, we've got to go now and do some listening. Listening? Yeah. Listening to what? Well, Christ has started hearing things. Claims he hears strange noises, like somebody digging under the smelter. Oh, wait a minute, fellas. Let's take a little rest. We don't want to break through the floor itself until we're sure everybody's away attending the inquest. The board said it was set for 3.30 this afternoon. Here it is, almost 4 o'clock. I'm not going to wait any longer. But Corrigan and King aren't here, and neither is Tom Harris. Then let them miss it. Tom Harris is the chief witness. He did the shooting. I'll wait five minutes more. If he isn't here then, I'll have to get his testimony second-handed from you. Uh, that ought to be big enough to squeeze through. Yeah. yeah. Now, give me a boost. <laughs> they thought they were so smart changing the combination on that bulb door. Yeah. Yourselves. Easy there. Start reaching the other way. Get going. Dusty, get their guns. I reckon this inquest is going to be our right busy place. Four o'clock. This inquest is declared in session. Mr. Martin Ford. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I understand you have some vital evidence. I have. Well, go ahead. I have here a slip of paper found on the vault room floor after the deceased body was removed. What's on it? The combination to the vault, evidently dropped by the deceased. It would be interesting to find out where he got it and uh, whose handwriting it's in. 
Now, Mr. Ford, tell us as near as you can what happened on the night of the shooting. Wanting to make sure nothing happened to the gold in the smell of vault, I had Tom Harris and Jake Smith guarding the vault. It was about nine o'clock when they heard somebody jimmying one of the windows. So they put out the lights and waited in the dark. How's that again? Spectator, please keep quiet. Come on, Mr. Ford. Anyhow, it wasn't long before that necktie peddler was in the vault room and working the combination. Now I'm asking you, Mr. Ford, is that nice? You know very well that window was left unlocked for you so Tom Harris could crawl through and rob the vault. Martin Ford, my blood is on your head. Fess up or I'll haunt you till the cows come home. Maybe Tom Harris did fire that gun. It was you who murdered me and made poor Elmer an orphan. <laughs> and gold beer will be mighty sorry to lose you. <laughs> We're going to be mighty sorry to lose some of them, too. Seems like some rustlers in San Joaquin have been busy again while we were down here getting rid of these gold bandits. Goodbye, boys. Go ahead, let's see what it says. Most telegrams mean trouble. Well, what's it say, Grace? Oh, nothing much. Looks like President Grant was able to bust up. Oh, the... don't be so modest. <laughs> After a wild session on the stock exchange today, the attempt to corner gold was completely broken when the government was enabled to place five million dollars in gold on the market. Your community contributed magnificently to this fund, and I personally wish to congratulate you, and particularly the three range busters. It's signed, Ulysses S. Grant. <laughs> and I wish to congratulate you, too. 